my 20th year in business. However, I started on the front step of my house, doing my mom's hair, my sister's, my brother's hair. How I got to 72nd Street was through um, a client, Susan Taylor. She took me to somewhere where I rented a booth. However, at that space, the people that worked there, the kind of work ethic that was going on there, I didn't really agree with. So I ended up getting my own space three doors down, and I stayed there. Now I have a larger space across the street. I've been on 72nd Street 20 years, and I've been in the business 30. I'm dating myself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yes, I'll be 49 come March 1st. So. I'm really, I'm proud of that. I started working when I was 19, and it's been hard in this business because I had no one to help me. I have been in this business by myself. So when I first started, I just wanted to do hair. The business aspect of it, I developed as I went along. I didn't know formally how to do it. I did go to Fordham University. I did graduate from Fordham University, Lincoln Center. I majored in um, psychology and minored in business, which both help when you're doing hair. <laughs> so I do have a degree, and I do have some fundamental basis of how business is done, economics and accounting and stuff. But most of those things I had to learn as I went through. My biggest challenge in expanding my business while I was so intent on what he was saying, was money. I cannot expand my business because I don't have that kind of money. Even though I've been in the business for over 20, for 20 years, I've been on 72nd and in there for 30, my business is still just about 900000 a year. So it's not yet still a million dollar business. However, I'm able to create jobs for other people within the community. And the thing about a beauty salon and a barbershop, do people think it's a hobby? It's a real career move for those of us that may not have the education, but we have the talent. Or we may not have the money to get the education, but we have a talent. It's a place where people can go, you can commune, you can bond, you can learn. I've, I've had a person find their mother who lived in Paris, and they were left in a hospital as an infant through the salon. So there are so many things that can be done in this central meeting place. It's like your church for your hair. You go there, you meet your friends, you talk, you have, you do it. Is. You go there, you have a spiritual connection with the people there or your stylist or whatever. But what I want to do is grow my business. Now, in the interim, I have I have had a television show on WeTV called Hair Trauma, which was great for me because it actually gave me more exposure. Um, I also created my own line of hair care products, which have been distributed through CVS stores nationwide for the last three years. Um, we just got picked up by a store, HEB, from Texas. They, they service Texas and Mexico. So now I'm just finally getting ready to get into international. And they will be distributing my professional line starting in April. However, I don't own that company. They license my name. I wanted to own my company. When I started with my products, I wanted it to be black owned. I wanted me to own it, I wanted my investors to all be black. And I had celebrity clients out the yin yang. I'm telling you, if, if they were black and they were celebrity, I was doing their hair. However, when it came time to invest in me and my idea, not one of them stepped up to the plate. Hmm. Not one. If it wasn't for a white gentleman who said to me, without him, I would never get this off the ground, giving me the opportunity, he gave me his expertise for free, introduced me to his son who had worked at Claro for over 25 years, all of this for free. And he asked for nothing and ended up dying before the products were made, created. When we went into production, we had to come up with $2.5 million. They were like, it's impossible, you can't do that. I got out there, they got out there, we raised $3 million in three weeks. Nobody could believe it. So we definitely got the product going, we got it open stores, thank you, and then we got it into CVS. However, $3 million, you can't compete, which is what he's saying. Procter Gamble, all of those people, all those dark and lovely companies, all those companies, 
you have to have $10 million, you have to be a $10 million company or more to compete, not to be successful, but to compete. <coughs> I have been in CVS for the last three years. I have been able to compete on some level, but I can't compete on all levels when it comes to a proxy gamble. However, I